Pastor Jay's here, how are you? It is graduation season, right? Congratulations to all those who are graduating. You achieved great things. You did a great job. Be the best person you can be, right? I hope you'll be the best Christian you can be too. I would like to introduce your book. I'm sure many of you already know this book. The title is I Am Second. This book has real stories of 20 Christians in a variety of professions, including broadcasters and athletes and musicians and business leaders who have left themselves behind and put only the Lord Jesus Christ first. It tells how difficult it is to quit drinking and drugs. It also says how easily prostitution and sex can ruin a person and how much life can be ruined. There's even Michael Smith's testimony too. Yeah, that's right. Here, let's watch what Karen Green has to say. Currently, she's a motivation speaker and one of her son's powerful youth pastor. Watch what she went through. Shall I say it wasn't a happy childhood. My mom worked morning and she worked evenings, which left us uncovered. And a lot of things happened, a lot of things happened. I can remember uh, her leaving us under the care of uh, my neighbor next door. He used to tell me all the time that I had big, pretty legs, you know. And I can remember him um, asking me, won't you let me touch you? And uh, when he did, you know, he gave me money and, and there was a store up the street and I went up and got candy. By the time I reached the age of 13, I had a baby myself. And my mother got very angry. She had a boyfriend. I remember the boyfriend making advances at me. And instead of her dismissing him, she dismissed me. I ran into this guy. We got together. And I felt like he would take care of me and my son. I allowed certain things to happen. He hit me, you know, he, he put guns to my head. Surely he took care of us, but it came with a big price. These men were like 50, 60s. She would ask me, well, how much money did they give you? Did, did he give you some money? And I would tell her, yeah, oh, you need to give it here, you know? So I would give it to her. I ran into this guy. He took me in and uh, he fed me drugs, crack cocaine. My son, he seen all of this. I was very angry. I had 13 assault cases. I was sick of everything. It just really didn't matter. You know, I needed money to survive. I remembered how, you know, I went out with the older men. It was just and mad. How they would give me money. Crazy. This is the way I lived my life. Men were the way that I bought my food, were the way that I paid my rent. This had gotten so bad. The street and men is all I knew. It got worse and worse. I didn't know anything else but to go to the street. Not only support my habit, but to make sure my son ate. And uh, I remember walking into a Dairy Queen and I asked him to feed my baby. And the lady told me, she said, anytime your baby's hungry, you bring him here and I'll feed him. I knew I had to do something to get my son up off the streets. You know, I would pray, literally pray, when I was out there. I remember going to get the drugs, doing what I had to do, prostitution, getting the money, coming back, getting the motel room, throwing the drugs on the bed, and asking God, please, please help me. After I got through praying, I would pick the drugs up and just continue to use. It came a point where I was just tired. I was so tired of my life. I was so tired of hurting. I was so tired. I knew they had a warrant for my arrest, you know. And uh, I asked the lady behind the desk, I said, 
don't you have a warrant for my arrest? And she looked at me and started laughing. I said, I just want to turn myself in. She said, babe, I can't find the warrant. I said, no, the warrant is there. It's there, it's there, it's there. And you know, I told God, I can't even see the time that they're talking about. I can't even see 25 to life. But God, whatever you do, I don't want to go back out here the same way I came in. Please help me. And I remember that's when my life began to change. That's when I surrendered because I didn't know nothing else to do. They had church down there. I couldn't agree with her more. It is very difficult to turn around. It is very difficult to change. But we can do it. As long as we stay in God, it's time to stand up. It's time to move forward. That's why today's scripture verse is very important. The main character of today's text is Caleb. Today's text says, an event that took place at the place where the land was distributed after the conquest of Canaan was finished. Caleb requested a rugged area. Give me the hill country. He's asking mountainous area, not a flat land. A rough hilly area, not a fertile land. And a rugged mountainous area, not a green pasture. The hill country reason in the text refers to Hebron. Is this classified as a very difficult place for war in the history of conquest of Canaan because of its many fortresses? Moreover, there lived a giant called descendant of Anak. Here, remember when Moses sent the 12 spies and uh, they came back, 10 spies reported to Moses, there are many Anakites living there and we saw them face to face and we were like grasshoppers before them. So, Caleb knew exactly how difficult and rough areas that area. But he was asking, give me the hill country. This means that I ask you to entrust me with the land that others do not want to fight, where there are enemies. Wow. Look at here. How this Caleb? He's now 85 years old. Nevertheless, he was asking, give me your country, I'll go and take it. That's right. He wanted to challenge, he wanted to fight. This is what we need, a spirit of challenge. Pandemic has cut our ankle. Pandemic has made us very small. How can we conquer the rugged mountain of the 21st century as Caleb did? Here, first, remember God's promise. Remember God's word. Here, Joshua chapter 14, verse 12. Now, give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified, but the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. Amen. Caleb wanted to move forward. Trust him on the word of the Lord. This is the true faith. This is the faith we need now. Challenging faith. If you hold on to the word and live according to God's word, God will not turn away from your life. God's promises save his own people. Remember the miracle of Jericho? They just circled around Jericho trusting God's word. And the word of Jericho fell, which they thought was impossible to conquer. Yes, hallelujah. It's a miracle. But it happens in the, in, when you stay in God. Caleb believed that if he held on to the word of God's promise, he could conquer this rugged mountain area. That's right. Everything is possible through Christ who strengthened us. God says, I am with you and I will help you. Amen? Amen. Do you believe God? Do you believe his power? Then move forward. Whenever we fail and get frustrated, we reject, complain, and blame family and others. But the problem is that we don't trust God. We don't obey God. We forget God's word. Are you scared? Are you afraid? Still not having the courage to challenge? If you totally trust on God's word, 
you can move forward. Amen? Amen. To conquer the 21st century hill country, second, we must follow God wholeheartedly. Joshua chapter 14, verse 14. Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephne, a Kenizzite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. As the Bible said, he trusted God wholeheartedly. Caleb was a faithful and responsible man. Like Joshua, he had faith in but was a hidden worker working behind. As a devout believer, he completely followed God and obeyed God and trust God. I hope we can be like Caleb. On the day when we stand at the sunset of our life and look back our life, I wish we all could say this, I have followed God all my life. Baby, you cannot even imagine, you are too young to understand. But I wish I could say this, Caleb's heart did not waver and did not sway as he served God throughout his life. This is the secret to conquering the mountains. This faith is what we need now. Do you think your life is rough? Do you think your life is not fair and it's like a mountainous area? Then trust God and follow God absolutely and wholeheartedly. The day will surely come when the mountains will be conquered by you. Amen? Amen. There was a 13 year old boy. His father died when he was 13. The following year, he lost his eyesight in a sporting accident. When his mother learned that her son would be permanently blind the, on the way back from the hospital, she had a heart attack and died on the same day. His 17 year old sister dropped out of high school and took a sewing job to support her younger siblings. The pressure was too great for her, and she died 16 months later. In the span of just four years, he lost his eyesight, his parents, and his sisters. But he didn't give up. He moved forward. He became the first blind Korean who received a doctoral degree from the University of Pittsburgh. Later, he became a, a policy advisor of the National Council on Disability to the United States White House. He's the one who moved forward. Nothing stopped him. After losing his sight, he didn't want to part with his younger siblings. So he prayed, if I can open my eyes, I want to earn money in a factory like my sister and live with my sister. But later he said, now I am grateful to God for the blindness. I became who I am now. Yes, this is Dr. Kang Young Wu. He had two sons. One is a very famous ophthalmologist. The other one is a lawyer who served at the White House. Remember, the today's failures and hardship can become tomorrow's success. And I pray that you challenge your obstacles with God's power, not with your own strength. Challenge any disabilities or any pain. Keep fighting. Move forward. Don't be afraid. God is with you. Even if the obstacles are big and strong, you can drive them out as long as you are with God. Amen? Amen. Now is the time to move forward. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your promise. We thank you for your word. Father, let us have a courage to trust your word. Let us have a courage to follow you, to obey your word. Let us not forget your word so we can conquer the 21st century of hill countries and obstacles. But thank you for giving us Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving us wonderful family. Thank you for giving us the, the life, what we have now. 
Now I'm asking your abundant blessing in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit to every one of us here, as well as our family and our churches and our countries, all the medical staffs taking care of patients, all the missionaries, ministers spreading your word throughout the world, all the American soldiers fighting for peace and freedom throughout the countries, bring them home safely. Amen.